Rocher. I'm on the board of OpenStreetMap US, and thanks to everyone for coming. All right, so I'm going to talk about something a bit more pedestrian. Um, literally getting on the street and sh street surveys. All right. Well, I'm sorry that got cut off. So first, I'd like to do a city shout out. Um, we got Seattle here. We've got Portland with Madeline. We've got Colorado with Russ. There he is, H hands up. And we've got Utah, he's in the other room, that's Martine. We've got Bay Area here. And um, Boston is in the house too, that's Lars. Um, OSM NYC, is anybody here from New York City? Yes, awesome. And Boulder, a community to be formed. All right, so um, uh, where am I going? We have two places to record that you have a community in your organization, like in your city. Um, first is on the wiki itself, and then also we have a GitHub repository with a JSON file, so you can submit a pull request just like Madeline did. All right, so um, before I talk about this, I want to just give a short layout of my talk. There's going to be how to do uh, street mapping, how to do a mapping party, and then also what are some good ideas that you can incorporate into your street mapping. Um, parties to make them a bit more fun. All right, so uh, I'd like to acknowledge that there are other mapping activities, but like mapathons and learn OSM, um, mappy hours, geo breakfast. But I'm just talking about um, getting on the streets and recording data and editing the map afterwards. I'm not very fond of the name mapping party, and I'd be open to invitations like for a better name. You say, because you say to people, let's go have a mapping party, and they're not thinking about the party that you're thinking about. <laughs> All right, so how to host a mapping party. So you want to plan ahead, and this is something that I'm trying to get better at. Um, you really want to be thinking two to three months in advance and get those events on the calendar. For example, GIS Day is coming up. I think it's November 7th. Um, so put that, put that event on the calendar and figure out what you're going to do later, but you know, let, let it grow. Um, or you could be like OpenStreetMap Utah, and they have got events planned out through May 3rd, 2018. Um, another thing that you can do is get your event on the wiki, uh, wiki.osm.org, on their calendar. Um, and also I'd like to say um, it's good to build a team to help you out. And I'd like to say thanks to Andrew Wiseman, there you are, thank you, and Stephen Johnson. Oops, wrong way. So one of the first questions that really stumbled upon, that, that stumped me was where should we go mapping? And like, what are the places that really need mapping? So Peter Miller at ITO has this great tool that gives you like the last modification date of the features. So you can see here that um, Nassau County in orange was edited pretty recently, but Suffolk County has not. And New Jersey, really not at all. But um, I mean, this is this is kind of like broad strokes. But you can see this at a lower level, street by street. And so you would want to go to the places where editing hasn't happened pretty recently. Um, after you capture your data, where would you like to go to edit that? And it's kind of tough to find a good place that's quiet, that has Wi-Fi, that's also um, metro accessible or sub public transportation accessible. Um, you really want to avoid a bar. And um, coffee shops are hit or miss. Um, yeah, as I said, you really want a quiet place where you can sit and chat with others and learn more. Um, so when you're pitching this event, how can you gather the attention of your, your, your mappers? I got a couple good reasons. It's because you can learn more about this modern, hip geospatial technology, um, because they get to improve the map, because they get to learn about new places in their neighborhood that they never knew about before. Um, you get to actually meet your neighbors. I'm thinking like Mr. Rogers. These are the people in your neighborhood. Um, you get to build a resource that the entire world gets to use for free. And you can't say that about a lot of things. You get some exercise in. People don't really think about this, but as you're walking up and down the streets, you're doing a fair bit of walking. 
And you know, you just get that warm fuzzy from building the community. So here are some ideas. Um, get a banner. Now, this is uh, Clifford. I think this is yours. I think um, the nice thing about a banner is it draws attention. And people will walk up to you saying, well, what are you doing? What is this thing, OpenStreetMap? And you just say, hey, we're going to be uh, mapping today. Would you like to join us? And it works. Um, of course, tweet about your event. But I don't, don't just tweet, about, tweet it once. You really got to follow up like every two weeks. Um, so here we are in Mapping DC talking about an event coming up. Um, get on Meetup. I would actually suggest getting on meetup.com. Um, I know some communities don't do that. But um, here's an email that I got yesterday. We just got our 330th member. And they just come out of the woodwork. Um, because they are associated with other groups that you're in, or they search on the keywords that in your group. And if you need an excuse for mapping, there's always special dates all throughout the year. So Red Cross Month, um, Open Data Day, Bike to Work Day, OpenStreetMap's birthday, National Day of Civic Hacking, GIS Day is coming up on November 7th, so plan your events, and Geographic Awareness Week. Um, also, OpenStreetMap US has quarterly mapathons. The most recent mapathon was um, bus routes and bus mapping. There have also been some special events um, in the past, Operation Cowboy and the Night of the Living Map, which sound pretty appropriate for Halloween. Um, oh, of course, if there are special events, uh, uh, catastrophes, um, disasters, um, organize a mapping event. So here's one from Russell. That was pretty recently, and this is for Hurricane Irma. Collaborate with their sister groups in, in your city. So MapTime has presence in many, many cities now. And there's uh, like GeoDC, um, GeoNYC. These groups are not always 100% focused on OpenStreetMap, but they have a common interest. Um, there's GeoBreakfast, there's GeoLunch, um, humanitarian meetups. Uh, often the universities host events like this. Code for America and Code for DC or Code for Your City, um, and some other groups here. So here's an event we did where we partnered, and this is the work of Andrew, um, where we partnered with a local group in Washington, DC called MOMIES, M-O-M-I-E-S. It's an acronym. I don't know what it stands for. And uh, it's about kids who want to um, build up their resume, learn what it's like to um, actually have a job. Um, and what we did on this event was walk up and down the streets of DC and look at the storefronts. And we were saying, um, we were also partnering, at the same time, we were also partnering with um, DC, this, the, the government of DC, because they're providing capital funding for sprucing up your storefronts. So we were, while we were doing mapping, we were also giving the storefronts an A, B, or C record. And so the kids have really helped us out with that. Um, this goes kind of hand in hand with what Cliff was saying a minute ago, <clears throat> that you got to get the buildings on the map first, even if they're just empty buildings with or without an address. Because later on, when you're doing street level mapping, you can just put points in the buildings. And it's easier to find, find things like that. Um, field papers works pretty well. Oh, there's also the idea that um, you print up your field papers. You should have a good way to break it up into routes. So you're, if you're expecting 10 people, break it up into five routes, uh, teams of two. I find that um, mapping down, up and down the street, one person's got their hand like taking notes, and the other person is often like looking out and capturing data, like phone numbers, opening hours, street address, uh, websites. Um, on that day of mapping, uh, take lots of pictures. Oh, safety first, of course. And take a lot of pictures. This is good for documenting your stuff later. Uh, some equipment that you want to bring. Um, 
It depends on where you are. Um, if there's been absolutely nothing mapped, like trails, bring your GPS. And if you're really out of reach of cell phone towers, then bring a true GPS and not a cell phone. Um, of course, bring clipboards and pens and lined paper. In fact, what I do is I build a kit that I put in a bag um, that I got from uh, Thea, previous board member. And I could help other groups get that, get that equipment too. For the mapping part, make sure you bring a mouse. It's really important. This is the gear that I have um, when I go out sometimes. Uh, that's my daughter. So it's a win-win. Actually, it's a win-win-win. So it's good for my daughter because she gets a, a fun ride on the bike. I get to map, and um, it gives my wife a little bit of time with um, some peace and quiet. Um, these tools are becoming great. Um, mobile tools that let you do mapping on the street instead of taking notes and then editing later. Um, I would highly recommend Street Complete. It is fun. Um, it's sort of, I, I'm, maybe I'm abusing your term nudge here, but it gives you, as you're walking down the street, it gives you that prompt, like, oh, there's a building here that's labeled as restaurant. What cuisine is it? You know? Oh, there's a street over here. What sort of pavement is it? It gives you the next question to make that feature a little bit better. Uh, and there's other tools, of course. So uh, I would like to give a quick example of an awesome event description. This event description for OSM Colorado um, really sets the expectations. So some people come to these events and be like, what, I gotta walk up and down and take notes and then manually do data entry? It's not a good, it's not a good expectation to set. This email or this, this event description really sets it, sets it up pretty well. So what to bring, directions and parking, uh, FAQ is about what software will we be, we, will we be using? Um, what should I do to prepare? What if I don't have a laptop? Really good questions here. What can I expect? Um, can I make it exactly at five pin? Can I come later? I mean, these are really good questions that you can include in your events. Oh, that is not the key I wanted. Of course, it's always good to tell a good story when you're done. Um, so, for example, um, Min Nguyen wrote an article in his OSM blog about finding Wilson Boulevard, and here you can see a good before and after um, of the work. He did all of this by himself. I, I was truly amazed. Um, and wrote an article about it. But if that's not good enough, try to get yourself in the Washington Post. So this is the, the work of Wade, who's in the purple there. Um, I'm not really sure how this came about, but it was a great story in the Washington Post. Okay, so that's how to map. Let's talk about some really good ideas that you can do. And all I did was pluck these ideas from all the different cities across the nation. So Rack Attack, um, who is that? Portland. So what they do is they walk around the city just looking for bike, sh bike racks. And that's all, like, that's all they map. It's just great. Um, mapping party and a hike. So that's what the Bay Area has been doing for about five years. I look back on the history of all the meetups they've done. They're all mapping and a hike, which is great because you get more exercise. Uh, wine tasting. I mean, who wouldn't want to go to that? And this is a really good one. I think this is Chase or Cliff. Chase, and you look on the map, you see a bunch of notes, like people are leaving notes. I think there's an error here, I think there's an error over here. And if you see a cluster, well that's a great place to map. And you just go there and you just eliminate all those notes. Mapping cemeteries, this is one of our favorites in, in DC. We've done four cemeteries now. Uh, Congressional Cemetery, Arlington National Cemetery, Alexandria Cemetery, and I forget the last. Um, we don't map every single gravestone but uh, just the, the famous people. Um, and that's actually great for Halloween too. Um, mapping sidewalks for pedestrian mapping. So this is, oh, Madeline's talk tomorrow, right? You're gonna talk about this tomorrow. Great, go to her talk. 
bus routes and bus stops mapathon. So this is the mapathon that we did over the summer. And the idea was um, turn on some sort of GPS trace, ride a bus route, and as you're going around, try to capture the features of the bus stop. So do they have seating, a bench? Do they have shelter from the rain, shelter from the sun? Do they have a bike rack right nearby? Now, the sad news is this was in the summer, but the good news is you can do it whenever you want. Um, and it would always benefit OpenStreetMap. Any idea? Oh, if you have ideas for a future mapathon nationwide, let me know, and we'll try to organize it. Um, j just a bunch of other ideas. Um, Mapillary and OpenStreetCam, hot missing maps, something organized, focused just for women who might feel pressured being around like Men who talk down to them. What is the what's the phrase? Mansplaining. Um, let's map a thing. So this is the idea with the bike racks. But you can just do anything you want. Let's just do t let's just do trees. It makes the whole event a lot easier. Um, it makes the event more accessible to people. Who's like maybe I don't know if I really want to do this. They look like some pretty advanced mappers. Oh, it's just about trees. Yeah, I can do trees, and and just do the trees. All right. There's also a trail blitz mapping things that you know, and an event that's just guided for newbie mappers. Um, here's just some crazy ideas. Uh, with the bus map mapathon, I was thinking about providing an app that lets people follow everybody else on, you know, on the, on, on the, on, in the city as they're going across the bus. I think that would just make it fun. Um, maker fairs and Renaissance festivals. We've done the Renaissance Festival in Maryland and map on your way to other events. Okay? And do you have any questions? Yes. Have you ever heard of a mapping party that was geared towards mapping elements specific to people with disabilities? Uh, for example, a friend of mine in Chicago um, uses a powered wheelchair that is quite wide. Yeah. So he was asking me if we could walk around downtown Chicago and measure the widths of doors <sighs> on buildings so he could know whether or not he could access that building. It's an amazing idea. Um, I know that at the University of Maryland, they have a pretty good implementation of a OpenStreetMap. They have um, wheelchair accessible routing. Any other questions? Hi, Brian. Sorry, it's not a question. It was actually a follow-up to the previous question. I know they did a mapping party for disabled, uh, for wheelchair users at University College London. Um, the difficulty that they found there, they were trying to map dropped curbs so you can get on and off of sidewalks. Um, but sidewalk mapping is quite hard to do for beginners, so they had a lot of enthusiastic people trying to do the mapping, but mm -hmm. struggling to get it into OpenStreetMap. One thing you could do is separate the data capture with the data entry. So you can have um, a team of people capture all the data, and then you just just take photos of every single, every single page captured, and then um, set up like something like a task manager where you can have other people do all the editing. Hi, uh, do you have any tips for recruiting people to help you organize these events? I'm having fun doing it by myself. And people are helpful, but it's I'd, I'd love to have like a team thing going like they do in Seattle, you guys do in DC, and I'm just like trying to figure out how that to set that up, make that happen. Andrew? I'm gonna let Andrew answer that question. I, it was pretty like uh, proactive. I was like, hey, Brian, I want to help out. And Brian's like, that sounds good. That was it. <laughs> yeah, so um, network, network. don't rule from above. If somebody says they want to do something, you say yes. Yeah, you, you let them do it. <clears throat> you ask. Cliff says keep on asking people. Yeah. Yep. Network, network, network. Are we good? Yep. Great. Thanks, Brian. Thank you.